talk to me a little bit about developmental and Cincinnati. That's something we haven't spent a lot of time talking about. Well, you know, we, we believed in my, my run as a head of talent relations that we could not continue to keep recycling older talents, right? They had a place, but they're, they're not the building blocks that they were when they were younger. They can contribute to the success of the brand, but they, they don't need to be the focal point entirely. You've got to build with youth and new and things like that. Wrestling fans love new, new ideas. They love new characters. You know, they love all that stuff. So, uh, it's, uh, we needed, we needed training grounds, the territories that evaporated by and large. So we, we set up a training camp in Cincinnati with Les Thatcher is a phenomenal coach and teacher, uh, very skilled and a good man. Uh, and he taught wrestling the right way. He taught about character and coming to work on time and being a total pro, et cetera, et cetera. So we did that. And then we'd have spot shows around Cincinnati. So those kids could work in front of a paying audience. It might be 50 people, right? But at least they're there and they paid their money to get in as opposed to just, you know, here's a freebie. So I, I, uh, uh, that's, we had Cincinnati, we had Memphis and we had Louisville. Uh, we had, I also had a little relationship with, uh, a UPW, I think it was called with Rick Bassman out there in Southern California. That's where I got sting. Uh, and no, I swear I got John Cena, but sting actually trained there. And then he trained there and then he, he teamed with warrior and they went to Memphis and then they came to mid South. So you, UPW produced some really good talents for us. And then, but the, uh, I got Cena from there. That's where I saw Cena work and got to know John. And then I signed him. The man thought I was too effusive about signing Cena. I said, I, I signed a guy today last yesterday, Vince, that's going to headline WrestleMania in less than five years. His response to me was, you need to go home and take a shower. Cause I took a red eye back. I hadn't <laughs> been home I came straight to work. That's really good. Yeah, I thought, well, he'd, he'd say good, good job. JR. I said, what a, you know, whatever, something positive. No, nah. go home and take a shower and come back to work. Okay. So, uh, but we had those, those developmental areas and to get talent, to develop. Right. You know, of course the most famous group was that group that we sent to OVW with Lesnar and Cena, uh, Randy Orton, Shelton Benjamin, uh, who there's one more too in that group, but we had a, that was an all-star cast. That was, that was one of those recruiting classes like Nick Saban gets every year. They're all five-star guys type thing. So, uh, but the Cincinnati did a good job. You know, we, uh, I think Al Snow worked there some, uh, helped Les, uh, but Les was a head coach. Right. And just did a great job. Les still around and I followed him on Twitter and Facebook. He's a, he's a wonderful man. Really is. So that was kind of the deal. We just knew we had to develop new stars. We had to give guys, even if guys were not going to be in the four hole spot, like a baseball player, the cleanup hitter, you got to have a lineup and you got to have guys that has good skill sets. And we knew that fundamentally speaking, that less. Thatcher was going to, uh, accomplish that for us with these kids that we were sending there. Let's talk about, uh, what we're doing next. As we said, he's going to be teaming with his cousin, Matt. They're going to form a tag team as both the Samoa gangsters and the Island boys in 2001 Umaga, along with his cousin, Matt do join the WWF. They're assigned to the heartland wrestling association, the HWA, which we just talked about less Thatcher's group there. They're going to use the Island boys name here, uh, with, uh, the names, uh, being ECMO. So Umaga is going to go known as ECMO here. They do win that promotions tag titles in uh, November of Oh one, defeating a, a couple of former WCW talents, Evan courageous and Shannon Moore. Uh, he used to be part of three count. They also work for Mer- uh, Memphis championship wrestling and hold those tag straps a few times. Why initially was if you had to guess was Umaga positioned as a tag team wrestler, was it just based on the heritage of the wild Samoans or was it more based on his size? And perhaps, you know, if his stamina wasn't there, this is a way to, you know, camouflage that a little bit. 
I don't think it was a stamina issue. I really don't. I think it was a traditional thing. That first uh, uh, statement he made, you know, often Seeker was such, cast such a large, prominent shadow as one of the all-time great tag teams in pro wrestling. I mean, they filled their role as the monster heel tag team as good as anybody could. So I think that there was something about, you know, trying to, you know, recreate the past, uh, and, and create the new wild Samoans in lack of a better term. So I think that's what it was. It certainly wasn't, uh, you know, Rosie may have had some conditioning issues cause of his size and he had some health issues as we know, uh, we found out later. But, uh, Umaga never had, he never, his gas tank never got emptied very often. I don't, I never seen him blow up. And, and back when I was booking the house shows and signing talents and so forth, you know, you get a good talent would come to you and say, man, uh, and either way, man, I love working with you, Umaga. Anytime you can put, book me with him on the road, I'd love it type deal. Or it's the other side of the issue, man, JR, he's hard. He's hard to work with. He blows up type deal whatever the excuse was or the reason was, but I never heard that negativity regarding Umaga. Like the talent generally loved to work with him. He didn't kill you, but he looked like he was. And when it come, if you're a baby face and it came your time to get back in the game and, uh, and, and, and come back time, he was there for you. He didn't lay around on the mat and take an hour to get up. He was down and up, down and up. It's just, he had great agility and, and stamina coordination. So I, I would think that it's probably the pre- president that was set by Offen Sika that, uh, WWF at that time was seeking to replicate. Well, they get their wish on July 22nd, 2002, Umaga is going to use the name Jamal and his cousin, Matt is going to use the name Rosie and they're going to make their main roster debut on this July 22nd, 2002 episode of raw as three minute warning, a pair of, uh, pair of thugs they're I guess they're the enforcers for Eric Bischoff and they're going to attack random wrestlers each week. And of course, you know, the gimmick Bischoff gives them three minutes to entertain him or here they come. Uh, and they smash a lot of folks here, including Lillian Garcia, former wrestlers, Jimmy Snuka, even may young fabulous Moolah, but maybe the most notable event and boy, this is regrettable in hindsight is when Eric ordered three minute warning to attack quote unquote, the lesbians, boy, this is a, a weird time for creative. Is it not? Yeah. It's the attitude era, man. Everything goes the, the, the more coarse, the better at times, at least it was seen that way. So yeah, it was, uh, this, that part, you look, you, we, uh, you and I were talking about, uh, your friend Shuley of the Howard Stern show who yeah. now lives in Huntsville, right? Yes, sir. I think, uh, I think a lot of the boldness, uh, of the Howard Stern show was, was largely an impetus for kicking off the attitude era. No doubt. And I think the Howard's creativity and his staff's creativity and, and creating all these characters and these oddities and the freaks of nature and, you know, all these, all these, uh, the whack pack, the whack pack. Exactly. That's what I was trying to think of. I think it kind of bled over into the early stages of the attitude era. And then once the attitude era started getting over and people like that R rated pro wrestling, then, uh, you just took it from there. But I think Howard Stern's influence is his, uh, his shows creativity with the oddities and so forth and so on, uh, is, uh, was, was a big part of what we were doing back in that uh, glory years. 